There is a survival of life after our individual death. And you are life. I used to have a major news addiction. I checked constantly throughout the day. I went to college. I considered myself an intellectual person, and I considered that knowledge to be very valuable, very important, and I needed to do it as a good citizen, and that it would be bad in some way to not be addicted to the news, which sounds crazy <laughs> as you say that out loud, but I think many people feel that way, that it's important. We shouldn't look away. I asked a Buddhist nun about this once, and she said, it's okay to look as long as you don't forget that you're just looking at a little screen and that it's not your reality and that not to lose yourself in the news. And I think that that's really good advice. And one thing that helped me a lot was when I became conscious of the effect it was having on me. And as I really became more conscious of my news consumption, what I learned was I only vote. <laughs> I, I have a few nonprofits that I love to participate in. And that is how I channel my energy to making the world a better place. And I realized that is really the extent that my need to consume the news ends. I need to make an educated decision when I vote, and I need to know to some extent what's going on in the world in order to know where I can best put my energy and resources into helping and in ways that I can be of most help. Beyond that, we don't have to check the news too much to reach those levels, to make educated decisions in voting, to know where to put our energies. And so I turned off all news notifications on my phone, which was like 20 apps. <laughs> and I, instead of constantly opening those apps and searching, I really consciously would choose the news and when and how. And ever since doing that, I don't lose myself. I don't generate any suffering. My heart breaks always for the suffering in this world. But to put my focus on that doesn't help the situation. And in fact, when we bring ourselves down, we are of no help to our neighbors, friends, family. And so for some people, their job is consuming the news. They may be journalists, they may be in politics, they may be in any number of academics or any of the industries that may require following the daily news cycle. And those people must also protect themselves. They must also be sure to recharge and take care of their their own psychological well-being. They need extra. Um, attention spent to how they're feeling. Um, for the rest of us, we need to consciously consume everything, whatever it is. And information, entertainment, and news is one of the most important things that affect how we think and how we feel. And when we bring consciousness to it, we can stop doing the thing that's causing us harm and suffering. And we will choose activities that enrich our lives and those around us. And that's really the goal of our lives that the news has hijacked in some degree by trying to fill that curiosity that we all have. Only they only want to show you negative things typically. And there's so many other things that we can put our attention and curiosity to that can really uplift us instead. There are so many things we can put our attention to and our energy towards that enrich our lives, enrich our inner life, our, our feelings, our emotional mindsets. And those are things like art, 
and music. For some, it's dance and yoga. For others, it's sports and activities. So many things that can enrich our lives. And they don't have to be scuba diving or jumping out of a plane, but for some that is, for others it's a walk through nature or walk down the street or just spending some time reflecting and being introspective and turning our attention inward to our inner spirit and our spiritual life, not just the physical life around us and really tapping into that essence of who we are and connecting with the universe within. Um, these days, I really just mainly spend time with the headline of a couple of the main stories of the day. And that's pretty much the extent. I feel like I can understand what happened really from the headline. And I could easily just dive into every article, but for me, that gives me the broad picture of the world helps me be aware of whatever's going on and, you know, keeps me connected to what everyone is reading about. And I think that's what the more important thing really is to understand what our fellow people are going through. And so I'm able to get that with the separation of choosing exactly when I read it, not getting news alerts and able to really maintain my inner peace and really connect to the rest of the world because I find that the news doesn't create an accurate picture of the world. They put it through a lens that is looking for the most graphic, horrific thing. <laughs> and so I keep in perspective that more beauty is in this world, then there is a crisis. And so it's important that our day reflect that with spending more time on things that bring us joy and lasting joy and less time focusing on the worst things that happened in the entire world this day. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to quit the news. For some people, it may be turning off notifications. For others, it may be deleting apps. For others, it may be you simply stop um, checking compulsively. You bring consciousness to each urge and you witness that urge and you just watch it until it goes away. And it always does. And if we're impatient, we act on that impulse. But the more we practice just witnessing impulse and urges of any addiction, then we recognize that it's temporary and that it will pass. And we become confident more and more each time that we're not a slave to the impulse, to the urge. And so we can just simply set a date and say, this is the day. And many addictions stop that way. And the news is no different. The hardest thing for me, and I think for most people, is we want to feel the most knowledgeable, have the most information. We have this insatiable curiosity. It's like a car crash happening outside constantly and we're just supposed to look away but we can look away we don't have to check every two seconds and we can realize we can stop giving our attention to what disturbs our peace and there's so much in life every addiction there's so much in life where we pay someone to make us suffer. We pay for cigarettes and we literally are paying someone to kill us slowly. And 
you know, the news is not so different. We're either paying for it or we're selling our data. But either way, we are giving money to a corporation in order to make us suffer. And when we consciously recognize that, and when we recognize that it's not helping us solve any problems, it's not making the world a better place, then we stop the insanity.